But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you, please invite your friends and let us have some good halal fun. Uh, you know, today we have a special occasion to talk about, which is the crucifixion of Jesus, which always is a special occasion anyway. But if we ask ourselves which verse in the Bible or which chapter in the Bible describe Muhammad when he tried to fight the cross? You notice that Muhammad is so obsessed in rejecting the crucifixion of Jesus. Muhammad, he put in his aim that no cross should be exist in this earth. The question is why? I mean, this guy is coming supposedly, he is sent by his God. And this God, he want to establish a religion, it's called Islam, to worship Allah, to kiss the black stone, to push your head inside the stone in the shape of a vagina, which is going to erase your sin when you kiss it, or when you lick it. But why he is so obsessed with the cross? If you remember Muhammad, he said, that when the Messiah come back, the Messiah is going to destroy the cross. Now, we know that Muhammad, he had many phobia. As an example, he hate dogs, and dogs hate him for sure, because he's evil. But Muhammad, his phobia focus more when it's come to Christianity, on the cross and how Jesus himself is going to destroy the cross. You know, the funny is that the cross as a symbolic of death is already destroyed by Jesus. So what this guy is talking about, the cross for the Christian became a symbolic of life, a symbolic of resurrection. It used to be a curse, it used to be a penalty, it used to be a punishment, but with the Messiah, the cross became resurrection, become a life. So why Muhammad, he hated the cross so much? If I ask you now, which verses in the Bible you think present the situation of Muhammad. Anyone can help me? If I say, where in the Bible we have like a chapter or specific verses, those verses describe exactly how Muhammad is when it comes to the cross. If you ask me, I will say, 
one of the maybe the best to describe Muhammad is Philippians, or in Arabic we call it Philippi. If you go to Philippians chapter 3, you will see in an amazing way that those, this chapter, as if it's talking about Islam and Muhammad. And you will notice it describes exactly what will happen to Muhammad too, where he will end. The enemy of the cross, what will happen to them? Nothing but destruction. Those people who they are the enemy of a Christ and the cross of a Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. How amazing. This is exactly Islam. A Muhammadan, he believe in Muhammad for what purpose? All his belief is connected to his belly area, where his private part, where his stomach. If we go right now in the Quran and see what exactly I will have and what I will get and what I will be if I am a person who believe in the lies of the faith of Muhammad. You will notice right away, all the promises is the promises of destruction. It is sex and food. And the treasure of gold and money. It's your belly. What, how much I can put in my belly? A brick of gold, a brick of silver. Muhammad, he promised them in the heaven. But who want to live? If actually, even Muslim, he will have two heavens. if not four, two of gold, two of silver. And then you ask yourself, isn't it this is how destruction work? Money, sex, Billy. Their God is nothing but a God in the Billy. They are driven by temptation. They are controlled by temptation. They read based on temptation. Even their reading, even their study is nothing but a temptation. There's no belief in the belief. And actually, there's a verse more describe Muhammad even better. If you go to Verse number two, it says, be aware of dogs, be aware of evil workers, be aware, be aware, and you can read the rest, and be aware of those who hate the cross, be aware of dogs. Now for sure, earlier, the word dogs does not mean dogs. Dogs is just describing how low the person is. With the Messiah and those who believe in the cross of Jesus, we will be in heaven and our heaven have nothing to do with the billy, have nothing to do with the penis, have nothing to do with gold and silver. That if it is a heaven, that is the heaven of the devil. If the devil have a heaven. We as a Christians, we are citizen. But we are citizen of heaven. Not of earthly things. Muhammad is satanic man who wanted you to be an earthly thing, like a worm. You know, the worm, you put them in some composite garbage, 
they flourish because they are warm. This is how they are made. And Muhammad, he wanted you to be a warm. He fill up your mouth by words, and those words, you are waiting for them to be converted into currency later, which is money, literally, gold and silver, sex, and food. If we go in the Quran, you know, I never heard really of a God, he promised people, you know, uh, fruits in heaven, and he says you will have a banana. I mean, what is that? Banana? Why? What is exactly the Quran is trying to tell us? Why I will have a banana? Do you think this is really from God? So this God, you will notice that banana is a fruit which does not exist in the Arabian Peninsula. It's not exist. Period. So this is like a big dream for Muhammadan. But this is something cheap and not a big deal if you are a person who live in Indonesia or if you are a person who live in Philippines or even in Africa or even in USA. I mean, banana. Why the God, he promised me the most silly stuff, but all of them are things that are really exist in the Arabian Peninsula. He is trying to tempt them by anything. What, what is exactly you don't have? What's exactly you dream to have? This is a chapter 56, verse number 29. There's no banana in Saudi Arabia. So he promised them banana. <laughs> Why? And you will notice that when the Messiah, who is Muhammad, obviously an antichrist of the Messiah, the Bible says literally, who is the Antichrist? Who is Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son and the Father. As simple as that. So when somebody, he claimed to be Christian and he say, oh, we and Muslim, we believe in the Abrahamic and all this garbage. First of all, Muslims are not Abrahamic. Secondly, the Bible is so clear. Anyone who deny that Jesus is the Son and the Father, he denied them both. Muslim deny that God our Father. Muslim deny that Jesus is a son. He is an antichrist. Because you will notice and you will meet many of those false priests. So they are very much politically correct, which means they are satanic. And those banana priests, they are the same as the banana Muhammad. This is the religion of the banana, the republic of the banana. Even when Muhammad, he wanted to establish a state, his estate is a state of a banana. When he tried to establish a fasting, it was a fasting of a banana. Today, the Muslims are fasting Ramadan. But do they fast really? They eat more. All what they do, they switch the day with the night. And at the night, they eat like elephants, and the price of food goes so crazy. The religion of the banana 
focus in the banana. Banana is a penis. Banana is a food. Banana is just what you will get. You get what you ask for. Allah will give you a banana. And then lately, we start finding that more Muslim sheikhs are really giving Muhammad a big banana. I mean, a banana he cannot even take. If you remember the video we just played yesterday by, by a very famous sheikh, let us see if we can find it again. Let us see here. It's a banana cult, my friend. Banana in, banana out, what you can see. In this video here, Let us see if we can. What did Allah do to make it appear that he died? Let me warn. Oh, sorry. And my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. Don't come with this nonsense because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa and that innocent man innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah he was crucified <laughs> here you notice that this is a Muhammadan he is a sheikh he is struggling this is a this is a form of a struggle of how stupid the author of the Quran if you ask yourself, first of all, this guy is challenging the Muhammad and saying to them, where do you get this story that somebody he looked like Jesus was in the cross? Where do you get this from? from? The Muslim, they will say, well, the Quran says, Allah, he made it appear to them. He will say to them, fine. But um, he made it appear to them. That's mean he made them think that he, is, he died. But where do you get this story from that Allah, he made someone look like him? No answer. A hundred of millions of potato banana nation. They cannot answer. And when the sheikh is saying to them, stop your nonsense. He is trying to take it in his own logic, says, well, Allah is a God who will not do unjust. He will put someone innocent on the cross, but this is stupid of him to say, because everything in Islam is unjust. When a Muhammad and he speak about just and unjust, we die laughing. Is it just to beat your wife? Is it? Is it just that the male he have twice as the female as an inheritance? Is it just that the man can marry four and the woman she cannot? Is it just that the man can divorce the woman she cannot? Is it just this is only about women? Is it just that Muhammad he do not need to do anything like Muslims? Muslim can have only four wives, Muhammad have unlimited open account for sex. Is it just that he have the best of the booty? Is it just that he have the fifth of the booty? Is it, is it just that Allah, he sent him a dish of shish kebab, he ate it, he got the power of 40 men, why he don't send you all of you? Why only Muhammad, he got the dish of kebab to fix his penis? Islam is a banana religion. So when a Muhammadan he tried to make his God like he looked like a God, we die laughing. Your God is a banana. He's a crooked. You cannot make him straight. If you try to make the banana straight, you will break it. And then when a Muhammadan he tried his best, to present his religion to us as if it's a religion, but the fact Islam is not a religion. 
Islam as a religion, as a banana, it's a mix of things. There is the skin, there is the end, there is skin, there, but banana is delicious, Islam is not. You can eat a banana, you cannot eat Islam. You would die. My Skype is open. And later in the second part of the broadcast, we will allow Christians to call us just to say their thought about this day and the crucifixion of Jesus and the resurrection. But not now, later, Christians can call. If you are a Muslim and you want to present to me your case about the cross of Jesus and why you reject it, feel free. We would like to hear you. And you will see how the Muhammadan, they have no established faith in anything. It's a banana cult. It's just a banana. It's a collection of ideas and collection of interpretation and nobody knows even where they are coming from. Like when the Muslim, he says to us, someone cloned to look like Jesus. We ask them, who is the one who said that story? Their answer is a banana. Shake banana. Shake banana. You Muslims, where do you got this story from? Any Muhammadan? You will tell me, Sheikh Banana, he said that. You don't follow even your prophet, even though he's a banana. But this is different banana. Where do you get this interpretation from? Who is the one who told you the story? Is that interpretation of your prophet? If it is, show me. Very weird cult. Very silly, very stupid. Have zero base in everything. Do we have any Muhammad and would like to say anything? Same time, when the Quran says, Allah, he made it appear to them, here you see the nature of the God of the Islam. The banana God again. He is deceiving us. I mean, they have a God who loud and clear, he say, you know what, I am a liar. He don't even, he's not even ashamed. He say, I made them see it this way. Because why you made them see it this way? Oh, because he is a banana. He is the devil. It's in the front of you. Allah is a certified liar. He is not a trustworthy. Actually, even the Sheikh, he said, well, if we were there, which means we Muslims, thank God I'm not a Muslim, if we were there, we will believe in the same thing. Same thing what? Same thing. Well, in same thing is that we will get the same conclusion that Jesus died on the cross. We will believe exactly in the same thing. That's what he said. Made a mistake here. We killed him. The Messiah, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, we killed him. In fact, if you and I were there, we would also come to the conclusion that he died. <laughs> Did you hear it? If you and I were there, we would get the same conclusion that he died. So what is our problem? If you and I were there, we would also come with the conclusion that Jesus, he died. 
just to show you how Muslims they answer us and just how stupid, how stupid the idea even to be a Muslim. You know, I have a strong belief that the second you became a believer in Muhammad, you lose your IQ. We have a Muhammad, his name is Muhammad Deen. Muhammad Deen is very smart. He is, uh, I heard that he is the smartest between all the girls in his household. Look what he said. You believe the person who died. Do you see the stupidity? Okay. In your religion, he did not die. So that means we are right. We should believe in Jesus. I mean, the stupidity is amazing, man. What is excuse that we should not believe? That he died. But in your stupid idiot banana cult, Jesus did not die. So we should still believe in Jesus because either way we are right then. We should believe in Jesus. And then we ask him, so why you don't believe and follow Jesus, yet you follow Muhammad? If you, that's mean you are following in the person who died. You, isn't Muhammad dead? Isn't Muhammad dead? Your banana Muhammad is rotting banana in the ground, six foot down there. The Muslim they did not bury him for three days, three nights, hoping that he will come back. Otherwise, I challenge the Muslim to tell me why you did not bury him for three days. Until he stink, Ibn Abbas, he said, Eat if you know sahibakum, fainahu qad antan kama yantun al bashar. Bury your friend. He stink like all a human. They stink. You are following a stinky prophet. We are the followers of the living Messiah. As we speak now, you idiot. The Messiah is in heaven, and as we speak now, you banana, your prophet is under my feet. What's wrong with this religion? Banana. It's a banana cult. The God who promised you a banana, <clears throat> Obviously, you don't have something better. <laughs> what the heck is banana? If I believe in Allah and I don't believe in Jesus, what I will get? A banana. <laughs> I am really convinced that Allah is God now. Drink some water. Listen to me carefully. I'm going to invite you to Islam as we speak now. And I'm going to switch to Bangladesh mood. Brother sister, there's a guy in the conference, and he tried to convince you that Islam is not a true religion. And this is my trend for Christian Prince. If your God is a true God, how come your God did not promise you banana? I agree. My God did not promise me banana. What I would do with the banana? Christian Prince, I will tell you what you can do with the banana. As an example, first, you can squeeze it. Mm -hmm. Squeeze it? Yes. Then you can make it a juice. Okay, a juice. And in the best scenario, in the worst scenario, you can bite it. Okay. That's new. I just discovered that. Exactly. So Allah, he promised me banana. Because Allah, he think about how he will make my stomach happy. That's deep. Hey, Zakir. Here, it doesn't say who is going to have the banana. And I am suspecting in your case that the one will have it is the wife of Muhammad. As you know, Muhammad, he could not have sex. His penis is not working. Prince and Prince. Watch your mouth. Respect yourself. Don't speak like that about the prophet. You idiot. I'm not the one who said that. Isn't it your prophet? He said, I was the most weak person between mankind. And then I invoke Allah. I send him, he sent me a dish of shish kebab. Isn't it Aisha? He say, she said that the prophet, he imagined himself having sex. In fact, he did not. Hmm? 
So now the wives of the prophet, they are with the prophet, and the prophet cannot fulfill his duty in the bed. What they will do? They will look around. What they will find? The banana. Prove me wrong. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, it says, that the prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had slipped, he had sexual relationship with his wives. In fact, he did not. So what the wives at that time were doing? As long as the prophet is not doing it. Who was doing it? The banana. This is religion. I mean, they brought to us a person. He have every problem in the world inside him. His penis not working. His brain not working. He forget what he is saying. He say something he don't know what he said. And then he himself, he, he imagined things never happen. He think they happen. And he himself, he claimed that his cousin raped him. He himself, he, 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 I mean, the guy, he tried to commit suicide. I mean, name one thing for him about, about this person is not stupid and weird. So the banana cult is trying to fight Christ. Good luck with that. Let your banana work. You shout, you say takbir, you say jihad, we laugh at you. Islam is demolished. And you have no answer. Here we go. My Skype is open. Where's your shake? And look how Muhammad Deen, he explained to us why Allah promising a banana. Let me show you the explanation of Muhammad. Muhammad Deen, why you don't call me, my friend? I can tell that you are a scholar. Guys, why Allah, he promised us banana? <laughs> Allah says, give us, give some of the heaven here in Al-Quran. Like banana, pearl, what the heck? Well, potato, I challenge you to show me one thing Allah, he promised you in heaven is not here already. You just said some. Is gold and silver here? Is penis here? Is vagina here? Is ass there? Is a bracelet of gold, bracelet of gold and silver? A pillow. Have you ever heard of a God he promised you a pillow? A pillow. I mean, isn't it obvious that this religion is something stupid? There's a God, brother. If you believe in him, brother, he will give you a pillow. What is that? Because those Arab, most of them, they never have one. It's not for everybody. Any Mohammedan? Pillows? What's happening with this cult? Reclining, this is the Muslim translation, chapter 55, verse number 76. Reclining on the green cushions, a nice carpet. That's deep. And look, he says to you, how in the world you deny the favor of your God? Shouldn't you have it first? I mean, this guy is asking you how you deny his favor. He did not give you the favor yet. As if it's a fact. And then he promised you, a woman who no man, neither a genie, did have intercourse with them and if them. I'm trying to be polite.
This is a religion. If this is a religion, what stupidity is? There's a beautiful female, brother. They are restrained just for you, brother. There are no panty, brother. They are wearing 70 panty, by the way, brother, but you can see through and they are like wearing nothing. This is what you saw Jesus for? Banana? This is what you exchange God, the true God for? The holy God, you exchange him for a guy. He promised you, women, they are jailed. I mean, jailed? Why they are jailed? I mean, are they going to run if we open the door? Abdul, are you still afraid that your wife, she will flirt with the neighbor? Do you see the stupidity of this cult? What this Quran implying that in the heaven of Allah, everybody is a per perverted person. If your wife, she go, if those women, if they call them wives, they are obviously just sex toys. If you open the door for them, they will go to the guy next door. Otherwise, I challenge you to tell me why they are restrained. What will happen if the door is open? Very filthy cult. This is why they lock the door over their wife, they lock the windows, they put bars, and then the wife is still cheat thanks to the internet. Do we have any Mohammedan would like to join us? Live on air. Maybe you don't agree with what we say. And you know, the Muslim, they say to us that this book, nobody can have like it. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to write a book and I'm going to repeat the same sentence 1,000 times because nobody can make like it. Like it. Look at this stupid religion. Look at this. What the heck is that? I mean, this God, he can repeat in the same word, the same word, the same word, the same word, the same word. What the heck? Are you out of words? What is this? The same exact line. Is that because he have a lot of wisdom to say, or this guy is just making, try to make a rap song, and it's very stupid, no meaning. And look, brother, you will have palm date and roman, or pomar, 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 granite, granite, granite. Yeah. What the heck? This God, he promised me palm date and granites? Pomegranate? That's amazing. Thank you, Allah. We have a person, his name is Lut. He said, we have, you have a talking donkey in the Bible. Well, my friend, why you don't call me and read for me the verse so we can laugh? Because maybe you do not know. A donkey in my Bible can speak but wisdom. A human in your Quran speak but he say stupid things. Secondly, you idiot, don't you know that your prophet, he claimed that he had a donkey, he stole it from a Jew, his name is Yafur, and he spoke to his donkey and the donkey spoke to him. And the prophet, he asked him, do you like females? And the donkey, he was a gay, he said, no, huh, huh? This is how stupid they are. Muhammad, he copied a story from the Old Testament. He wanted to have the same story. So he claimed that he had a donkey and he called him Ya'fur. And the first conversation between the prophet and his donkey Ya'fur, he asked him, do you like females? I mean, look at this. The first time Muhammad speak to an animal, he asked him about his penis.
I am really convinced. In the verse in the Bible, you will see that God, he made the word as if they are coming from the donkey. It's not that donkey is talking. God, he made, he put word in his mouth. But the donkey is a donkey. But you're a prophet. You have a long conversation with the donkey. And then Yafur, he explained to him what the Jewish guy used to do to him. He used to kick him and he used to make him hungry. Because he's a Jew. I mean, what you can say, I mean, true story. A Jew, a Jew making, makes sense, you know. I mean, what a stupid dummy cult. And what kind of a prophet he's still, still a donkey? I mean, aren't you even ashamed to mention the story? But yeah, at that time, they are not ashamed. Now they are. Now anything we show them, they say, uh, we don't accept it. Uh, this is not true. Uh, this is false. This is the book of Al Bidaya and Al Nihaya, volume number six, Ibn Kathir. What is the name of the hadith? Hadith al Himar. <laughs> the hadith of the donkey. Oh boy. It says here, Fakallama al Nabiyu al Himar, Fakallama al Himar, Fakal, ma ismuk. Translate to English. <laughs> so the prophet he stole from them from the Jews 10 ounces of uh, gold and silver and uh, sandals and donkeys sandals I mean have you ever heard of somebody even stealing sandals this remind me of Kadarov men in Ukraine his, his, his men they are stealing underwear from the drawers of the empty houses used underwear of women so he will take it to his wife. Trash. So the, the prophet, he said to the donkey, who, who are you, donkey? He spoke to the donkey. He said to him, what's your name? The donkey, he said, Yazid ibn Shihab, Allahu Akbar, Takbir. Even his name is Arabic name. His name is Yazid. His father, his name is Shihab. <laughs> and God brought out, which means brought him, of his descendant, of his grandfather, 60 donkeys, 60 limousines, 60 Ferrari, 60 rose rice made like this. They are made only for prophets. All of them were written by only a prophet which means 60 prophet, everyone have a donkey. And this donkey is the last donkey. Makes sense, Muhammad is the last prophet. <laughs> and then he said to him, from now on, I will call you Yafur. And then he says to him, do you like females? Do you like females? And by the way, the Yafur, the donkey, later he commits suicide. In case you do not know, when the prophet he died, he came to an empty dry well, and the donkey he jumped inside the well and he commits suicide. True story. Very true story. Do we have any Mohammedan? He have any argument left to say from the banana religion? Yeah, it makes sense. The last prophet for the last donkey and the last donkey for the last prophet. What's wrong with you? I mean, the story is perfectly made. 
The prophet, he asked the donkey, do you like females? The donkey, he don't like females. It's very well known that donkeys don't like females. What's wrong with you? They even have a, they have a gay club. And the Muslims, why the prophet donkey don't like females? There's a problem. So we have a banana prophet teaching us a potato religion, preach to us about his penis and how Allah he fix it. And when we ask him for a miracle, he could not even prove that his penis is working. And he could not prove that he have any miracle, even the Quran confirmed that he have zero miracle. The Quran says, The Quran says, not Muhammad, remember Allah. Muhammad is not the one who made the Quran. People keep asking Muhammad, you eat it. How come you don't have any miracles? Muhammad, you get them busted. He said to them, brother and sister, they keep asking me, why you don't have a miracle? I'm going to get them busted. Allah, he gave me that birth. Listen carefully. And nothing stop us from sending ayat, proof, evidence, signs, but the people before the narration, they deny them. Like, what the heck? So Allah, he will not send Muhammad any proof, any signs, any evidence, because former generation, they deny them? Will you liar? They don't. They don't. Don't the Christian believe in the miracle of Jesus? And they believe in every miracle done by the prophet before him? This was a very false excuse of a person who broke his teeth. I'm not talking about Zakir Naik, I'm talking about Muhammad, by the way. Because Muhammad, he lost his teeth too. Somebody threw a rock at his mouth, and Muhammad, he speak like Zakir Naik since then. The story says, So they throw a rock, somebody threw a rock from far distance. Muhammad is a coward, always hide behind his wife. So he, they throw a rock at him, and then they broke his teeth. And you can imagine Muhammad reading Quran. What the heck? And now we understand why the Muslims, they are confused about what Muhammad said. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? Do we have any Muhammadan? You know, listen to me carefully. If you do call me and you show us truth about Islam, truth, you know, you know because Islam is the reason of truth, as you know. Huh? Do you know how many banana Allah will reward you? I mean, just think about it. A God who promised you banana. You will get a pile, a truck full of banana. By the time you finish your conversation with me, before you hang up, the banana will be, will be covering you. We have a true God here who promised us banana. If you vote for me, I will give a banana to every citizen in my heaven. Once I was debating an atheist, and this is the only debate I lost. He asked me a question I should thought about it carefully before I answer. He said to me, Christian Prince, do you like banana? I said, in a natural way, you know? I said, yes. He got me busted. He said, see, our origin is a monkey. And here you see a lot of similarity between atheist and Mohammedan. The Mohammedan, they want to prove to us that monkeys used to be human, and the atheists want to prove to us that a human used to be monkeys. It's like they are two opposite sides of the, mag the magnet bar. The Quran, because the Quran is a book of science, as you know, 
come with the details which no science can deny. That because one day, the Jews, they did fishing in Saturday. So Allah, he made them monkeys and pigs. And me, myself, I have to be honest. I used to have a neighbor, his name is Jack Shalom, Yazid ibn Shihab. He went to do fishing. In the morning, I saw him leave, and I said, Jack Shalom, Khabibi, don't go and do fishing, Khabibi. He said, why not? He said, don't you know, Khabibi, that if you go to fishing, Khabibi, Allah will make you a pig and a monkey, Khabibi? Jack Shalom, he's a stubborn, and he's cheap. He don't want to buy food. He want to go and get fish for free. So he went, and he did fishing on Saturday. And when he came back home, he did not even notice what's happening to him. He was a transforming into a monkey. When he opened the door of his car, right away, I saw his foot. Brothers and sisters, I swear by the shin of Allah and his four testicles that this person, he become a monkey. Chapter 7, verse number 163. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Only in Islam. If you do fishing on Saturday, Allah will make you a monkey, not a donkey. I mean, look at Zaykar Naik, he's already a donkey. You cannot punish him, make him a donkey. I mean, you cannot punish the person twice. He will make you a monkey. Muslims, how come if a person, if a Jew, he did Fishing in Saturday, Allah made them pigs and monkeys. I mean, there's millions of Jews now, they don't follow Saturday no more. Is that one time deal? Did Allah broke the stick, the magic stick he used to come, like make it transform people from something to something? Maybe Allah, he lost his power. And the funny is, in case you do not know what the story is, Allah, he made the fish. He told them not to fish on Saturday. He told them not to fish on Saturday. But Allah is a disgusting person. He play games. He made the fish only come on Saturday. Week after week, the people, they are dying. They live in a sea. So he made the fish come only, only in Saturday. And not only that, openly. Look at this openly. Like the fish, they jump over the water and they play ballet and gymnastic. Like, ah, 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 we are here. You cannot fish us. It is Saturday. And who is the one who made them do that? Allah. Banana God. Banana story. Your God is a banana. I mean, who is the banana when I believe in such a garbage, buddy? So the fish, they come in Saturday, and they come to them openly. What does that mean? They take off the burqa? No bra? They are naked, aren't they? So I am the poor Jew, standing <laughs> in the beach, and the fish, they come to the beach. They walk in the beach, brother. Like, tick it, tick it, tick You know... I am, you know, the fish. You cannot put me in the dish because today is Saturday. Just make a wish. Like, what the heck? No, no, this is not a smart fish. Allah, he made them come. Allah, he made them come in Sabbath. Just to show you. Chapter 7, verse 163. You guys are not smart like Muhammad. I feel sorry for you, honestly.
So what happened exactly? And the question to them, Muhammad, and Muhammad is asking them, asking the Jews, hmm, hey, Jews, can you tell me what happened to those people in the, huh? I know about them. Hmm, okay, what happened? In rebuke about the city that was by the sea, bordering the Red Sea, the, the Jews, they were bordering the Red Sea. Hmm. And that was Elat. Now we have a proof that Elat belonged to the Jews. Thank you. About what befell its inhabitants. How they would transgress, violate the Sabbath by fishing, which they had been commanded not to do on that day. Hmm. And here is telling you how the fish come to them in that day and show themselves and do belly dancing just to make them upset. When it is not Saturday, Allah, he made the fish go deep in the sea. I mean, who can deny such a beautiful story? Look, in this religion, Islam, if you, if Muhammad, he raped children, Allah will not make him a monkey. Abdul, they raped children, Allah will not make them a monkey. But you do fishing on Saturday, if you are a Jew, Allah will make you a monkey. I'm really convinced with the punishment and the reasoning. A Muslim might say to you, well, you know what? In the Old Testament, there's a guy who was killed just for collecting some wood in Saturday. He was killed. God did not make him a monkey. He broke the law. Your God here, if he is consistent, and he claimed that he is the one who sent the order for the Jews to not to do anything in Saturday, why he didn't follow the order for, he gave to the Jews if he is the same God of the Jews? Where in the Torah, where Allah, he says to Moses, if any of your followers don't obey the Sabbath, I will make him a monkey. Nowhere. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than Islam? This is Ibn Kathir. May Allah give him more banana. Explain to us what happened exactly in details. Ask them, ask them, ask the Jews who they are with you, the story of their fellow Jews who they defied Allah command. So his punishment overtook them all of the sudden for their evil action, transgression, and defense uh, uh, by the sight. Defense by the sight. And also warn the Jews, O Muhammad, against hiding your description that they are finding in their book. So Muhammad now accusing them that this is a story, they are hiding it. So they do not suffer, their forefathers suffered. Uh, okay, so why Allah did not make the Jews in the time of Muhammad pigs and monkeys? The village mentioned there, it was Ayala, on the shore of the Red Sea. Ibn Ishaq recorded from Ibn Dawood, from Ibn Potato, the son of Tomato, the cousin of Banana. He said, When their whale, not their fish, by the way, it says in Arabic, Hitanahum, whale, come to them openly in Sabbath day, visible on, on the top of the water. I'm telling you, those, those fish, they walk like over the water. Hmm? Uh, according to Ad-Dahuk, Ad who reported from Ibn Abbas, Ibn Jarir said, okay, and did not come to them in the day, had no Sabbath. Thus we made a trial for them, mean, this is how we tested them, by making the fishes swim close to the surface of the water. On the day, they were per per forbidden to fish, so Allah, he made the fish come, only in the day of Saturday. 
when there is no other day, the fish disappear. And the fish would be hidden or hiding from them on the day when there is they are allowed to fish. And then the Quran complain and says that the Jews are fasiqeen. Fasiqeen mean bankrupt uh, uh, with, with ethic, you know, like bad, very bad people. But, but why they are bad? Because they fish on a Saturday. But you made them angry. The story just said that you made the fish disappear. And those are fishermen. They want to feed their family. But just to show you the hypocrisy of the donkey Muhammad. All of us, we knew that the Quran says you cannot eat pork, right? But the Quran says, if you are hungry, you can. So how come the Jews, who they are obviously now hungry, because you made the fish disappear, come only in Saturday? How come they cannot eat the, do fishing in Saturday? But Muslim, they can prog the command of Allah not to eat pork and eat pork if they are hungry. Chapter 5, verse number 3. And by the way, chapter 5, verse number 3 is the most ch stupid chapters ever in the Quran. In this chapter, because Allah, he says, I made unlawful for you the dead animal, blah, 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 the flesh of the swine. Is it So what about the blood? The flesh of the swine is okay? The flesh of the swine? Hmm. And the meat of that, which blah, 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 blah. And then he says, today I completed my religion, my, my favor for you. Perfected Islam for you. I mean, the guy, he is just in the beginning of the Quran. Today, this day, brother and sisters, I have perfected your religion for you. Completed my favor upon you. Like today, my friend, this is chapter 5. There's almost more than a hundred chapter left. If this day you completed Islam for them, everything is perfect. That means the rest of the Quran is a joke. It's not from the from not from Allah. Do we have any Muhammadan? Today, Islam become perfect for you. Mm. Ah. Muhammad, he sent me from second to the Lessonian. He says that God, he sent them a powerful delusion. Mm, my God is the, my, my friend, my God, he sent you a powerful delusion. That is Muhammad. Isn't it God who created Satan? So when you are not with God, you are not immune. Delusion will come upon you. Drugs. Sex with kids, or you became a pervert. This is what the Bible is saying. But your God, Allah, is the one who is proud about being a deceiver. But look what you just did, you did to me, Mr. Cold Scepter. You just mentioned to us something very important. Let me take a screenshot of what he posed for us. Or let us open the verse, because this verse can help us really good to understand how our Bible exposed Muhammad and people like him. This Abdul, obviously, he do not know that what he gave us is to arm us, not the opposite. So he sent me this verse saying, well, in this verse in the chapter here, it says that your God, he, is a, he sent a delusion. Uh, I will focus on this now. Look what happened. Muhammad, he claimed to be a prophet. And obviously, Muhammad is a liar. Our God, he will prove to us 
that Muhammad is a false prophet. How? He made Muhammad fail into his own trap, which means Muhammad, he made a trap, and he made Muhammad fail into his stupidity and his lies. How? Look what happened. Muhammad, he made a promise. In the Quran, that if he is lying, Allah said to him, Allah will cut off his artery. So Muhammad, he have a delusion that he will never die in such a way. Because it's just a fake promise. He made a fake promise. I mean, how the fake promise will come to be true? You know what I mean? In chapter 40, sorry, chapter 69, verse number 46, the Quran says, if Muhammad is a fabricator, if he is a liar, if he is a false prophet, if he is a banana, and then certainly should we should have cut off his life artery. That was Muhammad, the delusional, making a false promise. He said, there is no way I will die in such a way. Guys, are, are you listening? He was a delusional. He made a lie, claiming that if he is liar, if he is fabricating Quran, his God will cut his artery. I believe strongly that Muhammad, at the end of the day, him and his God is under the feet of my Lord. And I believe this is the delusional power. Which God he cursed those people with. To make an obvious lie, they think it's a lie. And later it's going to happen. Who is the one who make it happen? Is our Lord. So look what happened. Muhammad, he made a promise that his God promised him. If he is a liar, Allah will cut his artery. And this is exactly how Muhammad died. So Muhammad was a delusional. He thought, I will make a promise and no way will happen. It's like, you know, uh, let us say, uh, me, myself, I say, I will die uh, in the North Pole because I will never go there. And then it happened exactly what I promise. If I am lying, I will die there. He made a promise he never thought is going to happen. So when the Bible speak about the delusional and how God, he sent all the evil ones on you, or you are evil, or what the Bible is saying, now you have no protection from me. You lost your immune system. You don't need me. You just say it. I don't want to worship you. You just say it. I deny you. Okay, you are in your own. This is what the Bible is saying. And Muhammad, the filthy man, he made a promise that if he is lying, his God will cut his artery. And guess what happened? Our God, not your God, he cut the artery of Muhammad. And he made Muhammad say those words. So we as a Christian today, we will not be fooled by this liar. I mean, how, how more strong a proof we need? The guy, he said, if I am a liar, if I am lying, if I am fabricating, if I am making this and that, Allah will cut his, my artery. Do we need more proof? From the mouth of the devil. In the case of Jesus, Jesus, he knew when they were crucify him. They knew who is going to deny him. He knew when they are going to even arrest him. He knew the future. The Muslim, they would say, isn't it the Bible say that the 
cross is a curse. It's a curse for the criminals. But Jesus never commit any crime. It's a curse. It's a penalty. It's a punishment. But as the Bible says, my friend, the enemy of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose their glory is nothing but a shame, who their mind is nothing but earthly things, that is you, Muhammadan. All your religion is between your belly and your belly, your penis. Everything attached to the belly. Penis, vagina, stomach, banana. The God who promised me a banana, he must be a banana God. Who is a Muslim would like to get a big banana? and call me life. The bigger, the better. As long, you know, in case you do not know, most time they believe in size. That's why they say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Akbar means bigger. Size does matter. Actually, in the comment section in the previous video, I think, a Muslim, he says, not the previous, uh, maybe the, the two days ago, or three days ago, he said, you believe in a, a man, he is like five, five six foot tall? <laughs> and if we ask the Muslim, what is the size of your God? Any Muslim can help me? What is the size of your God? If your God is so big, but yet his action is so small to the point he promised you a banana. I mean, how small is God? I can grow a banana. If I live in a warm area, I will grow a banana and the banana will say hello to me from my window. Does it make me God? Do we have any Muhammadan who believe in the God who give him banana? Hmm? Actually, if you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran describe the size of Allah. But Allah is so small, and I will prove it to you. Uh, one of the most funny things about Quran describe the size of the uh, chair of Allah. Chapter 2, verse number 225. Do you see it? The chair of Allah, you see the Muslim, they translate the chair as a throne. The fact the Quran says chair. You see, uh, one of you, he, he, you know, he told me about a video made by David Wood about the Bible. But the video of David Wood is absolutely wrong. Not because he's wrong, no. Because David Wood is using wrong translation. How many times we say it? Never trust a Muslim translation. So the video, you know, those guys, they told me about it. I did watch it. Uh, I understand the intention of David Wood but he was reading a very false translation. As an example, when the Quran says, confirming what was revealed, revealed to them, the Quran was not saying that. The Quran was saying, confirming what is between their hands. There's a huge difference. You know what I mean? So, this is why it's very important that when you want to learn about Islam, you learn from those who speak the native language, or they will deceive you with their false translation. So if we go here, chapter 2, verse number 97, 
in the Islamic translation, nowhere it says confirming what is between their hands. It says confirming what came before it. And this is what David Wood was reading. But this is not the mistake of David Wood. David Wood do not know. He don't speak Arabic. He don't know what is written here in the other side. There's a huge difference between confirming what came before it and what is between their hand. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. Musaddiqan not only confirming actually, Musaddiqan means believing in. Believing in what is between his hands. The Muslim translation, confirming what came before it. And there's a huge difference. So he made a video. I mean, his videos are good. I like the, the short video, David, what he do. But because he is short in the knowledge when it's come to the Arabic language, he is using the false fiction translation of the Muhammadan. So, if somebody know him, he can talk to him and tell him, you need to fix that. Because each time the Quran says, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi, it doesn't mean confirming what was or came before it. It means believing in what is between his hands. And again, look how many times in the Quran it appears. Chapter 2, verse number 97. Chapter 3, verse number 3. Chapter 5, verse number 46. Chapter 5, verse number 48. Chapter 35, verse number 31. Chapter 46, verse number 30. And maybe more. He explained that? Okay, I did not watch the whole video. I watched like maybe 30 seconds. He was start reading the verses. And he was saying, confirming what is between... All right, so he did. Oh, okay, I did not see that, sorry. I thought he did not mention that. I did not watch the whole video, you know, for me, I don't really watch uh, uh, other people's videos. That's good. If he fixed it already, then there's no need to tell him. Uh, because this is how they lie to us. I mean, there's a huge difference between confirming what is between their hands and what revealed before it. Why they take the word between and why they take the word hands off? Because this is embarrassment. Because this is mean we Christians are right. And all if if Muhammad here is saying that confirming what is between our hands, that's mean all what the Muslims they have today is a lie. That's mean maybe Muhammad at that time he was a decent man. Maybe he's confirming what is between our hands. Which means, everything is not confirming our Bible, is not from Muhammad then. Do you notice how dangerous this is, this, this, uh, this, uh, this, those verses are? Because of the stupid Quran, confirm what is between our hands, that means every single verse in the Quran, in this agreement with the Bible about Jesus, is a false verse. Is a false teaching. We change the translator, all of them they are saying, confirming what was revealed before. You can take this word by yourself and you put it in Google translation. Yadayhi. Yadayhi, his hands. ما بين بين mean between. Do you see how evil work? If those people are truthful following the true God, 
why they are doing false translation. You tell me. You see, when we speak to Jehovah's Witnesses, the first thing we notice that Jehovah's Witnesses, they fabricate or they add words into our Bible. That's why their Bible is not Bible. Why they do that? Because they knew that they are a bunch of liars. This is Google Translation. I will copy in the front of your eyes. Copy. And then we go to Google Translation and we paste. Life on air. Do you see it? Baina yadayhi. Baina yadayhi. Translation is not perfect, but it's okay. Between his hands. In his hands. You can do the same. And then if you are a Muhammadan asking yourself, well, if the Quran says hands, and if the Quran says bain, which means between, why none of the translation using the word hands? Hangi Tato, wanna call me? Okay, my friend, you can text me in uh, Skype, and I will I will call you. Just text me first. Tell me what's your name. Is it Hangi Tato uh, too? Uh. I mean, people, they send me messages, it was really weird. I mean. My friend, don't send me messages in Skype unless you are a Muslim and you want to debate me. What, what, what I would do with this one now? Are you the famous CP? Okay. The famous CP. Do we have any Mohammedan would like to explain to us the famous Muhammad lies? Anyone? Who is a Mohammedan would like to call us? Anyone? Mayday, mayday. So as you see, their answers to Christians is a fabrication. Their translation to their own book is a fabrication. And then the funny is, they claim that you are the one who corrupt your book. But isn't it this is a corruption? Not a single translation use the word hands? How come Allah, he say, between his hands, you Muslim, you delete it? Where in the verse it says, what was revealed before? Where? Where is the word before? Where was the word revealed? They are adding words to their own false book. It's already your book is false in Arabic. Why you want to make it more false? Don't text me with silly questions, otherwise I will block you. Do we have any Muhammadan? When we spoke about the banana, the banana is a banana, it's a fruit. They don't even know what the banana mean. Even this one need interpretation.
Do we have any Muhammadan? If you don't understand what the banana mean, that's mean you are Abdul. And you need now Ibn Kathir. Good luck with that. Do we have any Muhammadan? The Quran said the sun set in murky water. In a spring of water. The Muslim, they say it appear. Where is the appear? Where is the word it appear to him? I mean, your God, he is very, and they say to us that the Quran is a perfectly made. Well, if it's perfectly made, then we should not have a perfect word to fix it missing. And obviously you need to add those words now to fix it. So how it's perfectly made. Any Abdul? You know, uh, uh, the Quran supposedly is a book of God, right? And then when you read, you will find that there is no connection between the verse before it and the verse after it. If you read, like, what is what is that? I, I don't see any connection. Look, look at this as an example. Allah now he is bragging about what he did, how he created you. If we go a few verses before, just to show you the stupidity of this religion. It says here, Allah, he mislead who he like or deceive who he like, and he guide who he like. What does that mean? If you go verses before, two verses, you will see that the shaitan is your enemy. Okay, hold on. The shaitan is our enemy for what reason? The Muslim, they say he deceive you. Okay, wonderful. We skip one verse, or you can read it. We read the verse after it, it says that the one who misguide us, the one who deceive us is Allah. So who is our enemy? If the one who misguide us and deceive us is Allah. So what is the job of Mr. Shaitan? Any Muslim can tell me? Any Muhammadan? If the shaitan is our enemy, why? Because he deceive us. Okay, wonderful. But as you see, it's not shaitan who deceive us. It is Allah. And here again, the false fiction lie about the translation. Look what the Arabic says. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ I will copy the word yudil as it is and paste it in Google Translation. Uh, let us do that in the front of your eyes. Let us delete the previous one and pause this in the new one. Uh, we are still copying the same word. Hold on. Look like we did not copy the highlight. Okay, now. Hmm. This is Google Translation. Mislead. Who is the one who misled you? Allah. So what shaitan do for living? I mean, the software of Google is like a woman. You are putting her inside, uh, uh, under a truck. I mean, what her voice is like that? Yudillu, what the, what she is saying? Like, what the heck? This is, what the heck? Yudillu, what the heck, what she is saying? 
Don't listen to Google. Saying, don't, don't learn Arabic from Google. She is saying it wrong. So, you do know, Google translation means misled. My translation is to deceive. So, Allah, he deceive who he wish, and he misled who he wish to, and he guide who he wish. So, all of us, either misled by Allah, according to the Quran, or guided by Allah. So what shaitan do for a living? Any Muhammadan? Shaitan was selling banana. Allah make banana, shaitan he count them. If the one who misled and the one who guide is Allah, so there's no place for shaitan then. Because that's it, the whole world is either misled or guided. Do you see the stupidity? This is the chapter 35, and this is verse number 8. I remember once I was speaking to a Muslim and we spoke about the Quran and uh, I wanted to show him a verse on the Quran so I have a book with him so he want to give me the book Adar Abdul next to him he said no 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 he said to him لا يمسه إلى المطهرون look what the heck he said nobody can touch it except the one who is circumcised I said to him do you want me to unzip I mean, you give your Quran, you coward, you, you hypocrite, in the street to everybody in the street. And now, you don't want me to hold the Quran because only those who they are circumcised? What have, what my penis have to do with your book? Are you saying he is the one who will hold it? As I know, he don't have two hands. As I remember, what a stupid cult. And this is the holy book. All of it is about penis, banana, vagina, boobs, and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you cannot touch it, okay? He's a Christian. He is not circumcised as a brother. The real prophet was not circumcised. Once one of the Muslims, he says to me, how come, I said, why, why your prophet would never be circumcised? He said, he's born circumcised, okay? Oops, who ate it there? I guess the mother of Muhammad, she have a rat there, he was chewing. He was born circumcised? Where do you get this from? Hmm? Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> uh, today, because we have a special occasion, we said we will, the first part of our broadcast, we will take Muslims, but obviously there's no Muslims. So now we will take calls from Christians. So if you are a Christian, you want to share with us uh, whatever you want to say about the crucifixion, what the crucifixion mean for you, uh, what this occasion, what this day, what this time in the year mean to you? If you like to do so, feel free. You can call me. This is a special time, and that's why we're allowing. As you know, I don't allow Christians to call me because we want people to hear the Muslims. So it's a best comedy, you know. Uh, but as long as there's no Muhammadan, uh, what we can do? So if you are a Christian, we would like to go, call us. Please text me first. You cannot call me right away. You have to text me and say I'm a Christian. Be sure you say I'm Christian and I will call you. And be sure you want to speak about the occasion, uh, which is the crucifixion of Jesus. What the cross means to you? What do you understand about the cross? Or if you have a question. Feel free. Uh, <clears throat>
You, you're here? You mean the name in the Quran? <laughs> you mean Yahya? Yahya supposedly, the Muslim, they say Yahya is a word mean Yohanna. But where this Yahya coming from, we do not know. Everything they have is wrong. All the names they have is very funny. Yeshua became Isa. John became Yahya. Paul became, you know, in Arabic they say, uh, Bulos. But all the names they, they have, they have their, they make their own names. Do we have any Muhammadan? And if you are a Christian, you would like to join us for free? It looks like everybody is. Nobody there. Nobody want to talk to me. I mean, what's happening in here? Man. Okay, we have an ex-Muslim. <laughs> Let us see what you want to say. Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Yeah, let me just... Just to mute you too, please. Can you hear me now better? All right, go ahead. Yes, uh, well, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad, and I'm an ex-Muslim uh, Christian now, follower of Jesus. And uh, yeah, very happy that I found my way in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean to that. So, uh, Muhammad, yeah. as long as you are an ex-Muslim, when you used to be a Muslim, how you used to think about the, the crucifixion of Jesus, how you look at it? Before oh, you became... it was, uh, for me, it was horrible. It was, uh, it was more of a brainwash, I believe, like since I was young, it's an association with uh, Allah and abomination, and it's the biggest sin that you could do. They would tell me uh, it's better to drink, uh, to make zina, or to do any other sin, but never, never do shirk, never associate uh, the cross or Jesus as the Son of God with Allah. You could do anything except that. And uh, based on that, uh, I, w I would say, but why? And they would say, because the Bible is corrupted, they invented it, uh, Jesus never said that, and you know. So it was more of a brainwash uh, than anything else. And because of my fear of not questioning the Quran, was my my uh, my desire to think that I know who God is through Islam. But uh, one day I, I was reading uh, those uh, verses that you were talking about about you know So mm -hmm. it's what what what's in between their hands. So I said, well, you know, because I I speak Arabic not that much. Yeah. Uh, I speak about reading slow because I was born outside. Uh, my country. I understand. My wife uh, reads better Arabic, so she said, you know what, let's get a Bible, because I was thinking about it too, like if it's by Nayadahim, so the Bible should be true, so that's when I encouraged myself to, you know, let's see what's this corrupt did, Bible did you, about. Did your wife and yourself not see the word by Nayadahim? Is it there or we are making things up? Yes. It is no, there, no. Right? No, it is. It is. That's the main reason why I took it, because if it was saying in the Arabic, uh, that it came before, then I would not even encourage myself to get a Bible. The only reason I got the Bible is because uh, at one point I reached to saying, you know what, I cannot follow Muhammad anymore because the hadith are very messed up. So if he's actually a prophet, I believe their enemies were creating stuff. So I will stick to the Quran alone. When you stick to the Quran alone, yeah. you find a lot of difficulties in how to make wudu because the wudu that we used to make when Muslims is different than the, the way the wudu Allah says in the Quran. So the wudu of three hands, three times the hands, the way they do on the feet, it's not prescribed <coughs> specifically in details in the Quran. The way we pray, it's Salat al dhuhr how many ruqat, and all of that, it's not mentioned in the Quran. So you need still the hadith. So it was confusing to me. And then when I went deeper into the Quran, I found the Bayna Yadayhim which is what's confirming between their hands. And that's what encouraged me to go and get the Bible. And not just the Bible, I got the Torah as well, just to have it like a collection. Because I said, 
if we're the people of the book, the best thing to do is to go deeper into the books of God and see. And literally, I know is that I ended up discovering that there, there's a big difference between two. So I was in a dilemma into, is it a corrupted book, the Bible, or is Islam a total false religion? So I was leaning towards atheism <clears throat> because I was hurt. Like, I, I would dream to live uh, on the days of Muhammad, the prophet supposedly, and be fighting next to him, you know, and that desire of uh, spreading Islam and, you know, that brainwashing mm -hmm. life and to not being true anymore, to now being Jesus, the son of God. So I, I said, this is nonsense. And it was very hard for me. I had a very, very difficult spiritual uh, period of time. I was uh, so disappointed of God, of life. I was uh, going towards, you know, like uh, thoughts of suicidal, being lonely more, away from my family, because it was a big deception. Like, what is this? How could God be so evil? The, those are the thoughts that I came to my head. But later I know is that along the way, God was always with me, and slowly he was guiding me. Uh, through my dreams, I started seeing uh, a man uh, that came to me, never spoke to me, uh, had a very bright face, you know, brown hair. And uh, when I saw that, I decided to go to a church. Uh, and I passed by that church. I speak to see if I can speak with the pastor. I meet a very, very nice, amazing pastor. I tell him my spiritual connections and what I'm seeing and all of that. And he starts helping me slowly, you know, giving me some advices, uh, not even uh, anything from the Bible, you know, just like a friend, a very nice person, you know. But uh, he knew inside that I was going towards the right path. And he, he used to always tell me, you know, what, Muhammad, every time you leave my church and you come to my church, I always pray for you. And uh, slowly I start seeing the same man again in my dreams and but this time he said muhammad the quran says that a man can marry more than one woman do not do it that's an abomination to god uh, uh, that's that's a very bad thing to god to do and then he, the same guy came but with moses and we prayed together and then the fourth time <clears throat> that person same person resurrected me from the tomb I was full of light, you know, and I was extending my hand to my wife and I told her, Jesus is the way. So that's my spiritual connection I mean, to God in my dreams. Yeah. And uh, since then, I went, I got baptized, you know, and I've uh, been reading the Bible. I'm so happy. I felt so, so, so light that I swear to God, when I tell that to a Muslim, they think I'm lying to them. My only desire is to make them feel what I feel right now because my heart feels circumcised. I don't hear no music. I don't look anyone <clears throat> in an, any objective way. I'm very, 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 very happy the way I feel. I only hear to worship music. I'm always close to God. You know, I'm always praying. I'm always full of love. You could come and put a nail on my feet. I would not cry. I would not hate you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't desire to fight. I don't desire to, you know, to hate, but to love, to, to give compassion, because I feel that love that comes from God. And I feel like I have to give it to someone so that someone can find the love of God as well. So that I never found in Islam. In Islam, I was technically feeling like I need to force, and I never thought about it in that way, because, you know, the community, society, you're an Arab and you understand our culture is kind of you know uh, effective on every way that you do you think it's always a criticism yeah so it prevents you from being yourself it prevents you from being free and now i feel so free like literally even the chains what the bible says that you free from your chains i feel that completely like i'm so free to think to do whatever i want and i'm a man just imagine a woman in our society and i come from a from a Lebanese culture, you know, it's kind of mixed up. Just imagine a person that comes from Saudi Arabia, that's even worse, Pakistan. Yeah. So 
Muslims don't understand that we are in a our communities, uh, the religion of Islam, it is a big problem. It's no hate towards the people. It's just that we cannot deny the facts of the bad things of it. So I don't know. Like I wish them the best. I pray for them all the time. That's my experience. I wanted to share it with you. I'm really happy to have you, my friend Muhammad. And uh, uh, even though, like, look like I am, I have nothing to do with your conversion to Christ, but I'm still uh, very happy to hear that you 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 become a Christian and you yeah. accept G Jesus. Because usually people who call me is the one who left Islam because they listen to me. But look, obviously you are not one of them. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, well, but uh, you know what? When I left Islam, I met you at the beginning of it. When I became, uh, when I got baptized, I met you along the way. And since then, I've been watching you for about seven months. And uh, th the reason I know more about the flaws of Islam is absolutely because of you. I knew the basic things of why I left Islam. I left Islam because the confusion of Allah saying that, that he revealed the Torah and the, and the, and the, and the gospel. You know, uh, the, the basic stuffs, I knew them. But the reason I left Islam was more of a spiritual connection with God rather than an academia yeah. or like you're doing. But you absolutely helped me to understand the academic part of it, like the flaws, the actual. But uh, the way I see it is that I, uh, I live by what I believe, not by what I can, not by what I can see. So uh, I converted and I found God because I believed not just because I saw, but now I can see not to increase my faith. And uh, thankfully, I do see your videos is to increase my knowledge because I plan to help my, my Muslim friends and family members to find the truth. And uh, you, thanks to you as well, my Arabic has improved because I practice with you as well by reading when you read and when I read by myself, which is, which is helpful, right? It's always good to have the extra knowledge as well. Yeah. Well, uh, what about your wife? How, how like your wife, she became a Christian now? Yeah, absolutely. We're all, all right. in the family of Christians now. Wonderful. Yeah. So the whole family, they are, you know, they, they believe and uh, they go to the church. And uh, what about your, like uh, your family? I mean, the bigger family, like your parents, etc. How do they think about it? No. That? Well, we haven't uh, technically told them completely about that, although we live outside uh, of the country and, you know, we're far. Yeah. But, you know, like, the, we definitely know that we're not accepted. So do, we're just keeping it neutral. It's not because of fear, but it's because I feel like it's not the right time. Uh, yeah. My dad is not in a good situation, you know. I don't want to increase that pain and... Yeah, I although I wish, yeah, although I wish they could know and they could find a way, but I feel like uh, it's not it's not the time yet for them to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, my friend, I'm so happy for you. Uh, if you if you uh, if you like to read, uh, you, because obviously you are very passionate about love, you can go to First Corinthians chapter 13, and you will see where it says that love never fails. And, you know, obviously the Bible have a special look at love. Love is not about a man and a woman loving each other. Because a man, he loves a female for a reason. And the female loves a man for a reason. But love in the Bible is above all those reasons. It's a, it's a heavenly love. It is above. It's not the, the love of need. It's not the love of take. It is the love of giving. So with the Messiah, this is what the Messiah he did in the cross. His love never fail. He give, he give, he give, he never take. And in the top of that, the only take he took actually, it was an insult. Like the Muslim now, they insult him nonstop. So his love is still, when Jesus was on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. And here you notice that with the Christ, you are a new person, as you said, you don't want to fight with anyone. You don't want to argue and like uh, uh, hate anyone for simply yes. love never fail and love uh, love who made you a different person. Who is Jesus? Yeah, 
true. Like before, I always wanted to be that wolf, you know, that fights and, you know, the way Islam always portrays uh, with their, you know, musalsals and yeah. uh, like serious and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now all I want to be is a sheep and waiting for Jesus to come back and be my shepherd, you know. So th there's a big difference of perspectives of how you see life when you are a Muslim to what is following Jesus. So it's, if 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 Islam if Muslim means uh, like like if they claim to be the ones that submit to Allah for real, what well, they're mistaking because to actually submit to Allah, then you give the whole world to God, and God will always fight at the day of judgment for every mistake that people did against you. In Islam, if you insult me, I have the right to kill you. If you do this, I have the right to, you know, like it's. No, they create so... actually, even if you don't insult, if you, if you do nothing, it's just because you don't accept <laughs> yeah. Muhammad. And, and this is why they kill each other. I mean, look at the Muslim countries, you know. Yeah. They, they have never stopped war. And why? Nobody even knows why they are killing each other. You know, it's just. Uh, and anyone who disagree with them, they call him a kafir, even if he is a Muslim, you know? Yeah. So, and you know what's funny? And they, they end up saying, well, look at the Crusaders, they did worse and blah, blah, blah. OK, if for the sake of argument, I will agree with you. Crusaders did wrong or worse than, than Muslims, but it's not endorsed by the Bible. Jesus said, if someone hits you on one side of the face, give the other one. Yeah, Jesus I have, never I have commanded. A correction here, Muhammad. I have a correction. The Crusade, the yes. Crusade was a reaction, not an action. So if, yes. if you come to my house and you are, uh, let us say I, you are, you used to be a Muslim and I am a Christian. And then you come to my mm. house and you took my house. Do I have yeah. the right to fight you back or not? I do. So yeah, 100%. The, the crusade, yes. the crusade is the, you know, the crusade, what, the, what they did, it was not their fault. It was for 600 years after Jesus, we never have a crusade, correct? Never. Yes. The crusade happened after the Muslims attack us, not before. And you, as a as a Christian, you say, yes, Jesus, he said, if somebody hit you in your cheek, give him the other one. But doesn't mean that somebody can take your wife from you. The Bible says, the yeah, one 100%. Who lived, the one who lived by the sword, by the sword shall die, which means he shall be killed. So the Bible doesn't teach us to be coward. Remember that. The Bible does not teach yeah. us to let people take our wives and our women and our life. No. The Bible says, don't be Correct. evil. Don't fight evil by being evil. So, if they are attacking you to take a wife, do not attack them and take their wife. You know? Okay. Like, okay. don't be evil like them. You know, fight fight them to defend yourself, yes, but not to be evil. There's a reason for the fight. And you are not the one who is making the fight. It is them. So the crusade never was, never was, an act of Christians against Muslims. It was the Muslims making their crusade which is jihad on their side against yeah, us but, and then the Christian, they respond. Yeah, but th this is what I mean. Like jihad is uh, to make jihad, like to attack another uh, another country or, another, or a neighbor ruler and take their land to spread the word of Allah and create justice on earth and blah, 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 and all of that that the Islam goes through. It's, it's encouraging Islam to be the initiative from their side rather than being a defensive perspective. And Muslims around the world, because we live in a modern era where human rights uh, exist, you know, and it's the social media, they say, no, we never attack anyone. We just defend ourselves. Yeah, because, Islam because is they are, always because about... Because they are weak now. Because they are weak. Yeah, you know? because they don't want to show that because if they say that, it's like when the verse says, but they're saying, came after, I came before us, you know, and then there's there's a lot of messed up stuff that when <clears throat> the Quran in Arabic, I never questioned and I used to read, like, well, just imagine myself, I, at one point I missed myself, me praying uh, in Arabic, uh, reading Quran and saying that I will have 70 wives or 70 virgins on, on, on heaven. Like, how could you be praying if, you, if you're sinning at the same time by saying that I will have virgins on heaven? Like, my mind, how could be connected to God at that state where I'm praying that supposedly I'm connecting with God? If I'm talking about uh, a pornographic scene or, you know, or a desire to have women or boys and all of that that you go through like it doesn't make any sense when when in christianity all you gotta do is go to your room sit down and pray with your heart and always give thanks to god and like that's all you gotta do and despite that 
before I used to think, well, how easy is it to be a Christian? You know, someone died for you and blah, blah, blah. But it, it's a bigger, it's a heavier burden on me knowing that someone like Jesus died for me because he loves me. It's a bigger burden on me because the sake, Satan is all the time behind me trying to make me sin. And I will feel so ashamed and I will feel like so bad if I ever commit a sin knowing that the Lord died for me to forgive my sins. Mm. So it's a heavier burden on us as Christians to be the true followers of Jesus, knowing that he died for us because Satan is always around. But when, when I was a Muslim, I thought I was going to heaven. I thought, you know, Satan was never around me because I was on the hands of Satan. Already. Right, you are already delivered deliver to him. And you know, like you say, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, 100 times, that's it, you are in heaven, you know? Yeah, 100%, <laughs> you know? I mean, or you I, do I never, shahada, I heard, that's it. I never heard of a stupid religion. If you say a, a sentence 100 times, you go to heaven. What is that? I mean, so what? So I go now, yeah, I do I, all garbage. You know, I do. My, 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 my grandfather, my, grand, my grandmother once said, if you say Qul huwa Allahu Ahad uh, 10 times, yeah. uh, it's like you read the whole Quran. That's and then it. my grandfather stood up and he <laughs> told her, what well, are you crazy? Then why did Allah create the rest of the Quran? Yes. And like if, if Muslims between themselves, they're, you know, debating this kind of ideology. Just imagine that, uh, you know. Stupidity. <laughs> yeah, this is stupidity. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Muhammad, for, for calling. And uh, uh, we wish you, you and your wife, you know. Uh, very, thank you. Very good life and your family, for sure, your children's. Good life for the Christ and good future. And for sure, you are in a safe hand. It's his hands, for sure. Thank you. I'm so Thank grateful you. for your videos. We'll keep watching them to get better education and, you know, and be always up to date with the new stuff you find. And we'll pray together for always help the Muslims, God you know, find a way with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. I mean, my friend. Okay. Thank God you. bless you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so here we heard our friend Muhammad. Uh, we have another, I will, I will take you by order. You text me and then the one who texts first, I will call you. Now I guess we have a Christian. Let us see. We'll mute the speaker so it doesn't hurt your ears. And don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon so you can get notification when we go live on air. Okay, we are trying to call. You know, YouTube is not sending notification mostly to people trying to join us live. So if you subscribe to Patreon, the admin, they can post the link for you. You will receive notification by your email for sure. Let us call again. See if he will answer. But look like he is not he is not answering. Uh, let us try now one more time. See if it works. It says he is not available, and actually it says decline. So why you says you want to call? Hmm. All right. Okay, next time. Well, there's no next time, my friend. This is only the time we will give chance for the Christian to call. Uh, he's driving. Okay, he's driving. All right. Uh, let us see here. Another person. Okay. Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Yes, um, praise be the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for giving me this opportunity. Um, I just want to make a short, um, a short message, really, for this Easter. Because Christ is Lord. He died for our sins. He rose again from the dead. And whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have eternal life. I mean to that. And um, I want to give a short testimony. Okay. Before uh, I got saved. Hello? You, are you an ex-Muslim? No. Okay. No, I'm, 
I'm a Christian. <laughs> All right. No, I'm a Christian. Yes, I want to give a, a short testimony. All right. Um, I was before I was saved. I had this self righteousness in my heart. I thought I was good enough. I thought God accepted me all the time. I never had this conviction that you need Christ and Him crucified. Um, and it stayed with me for a very long time until I was confronted with the gospel. When I was watching this um, YouTube uh, guy who was preaching, um, who was preaching to the other people like in the street, telling them that the only way you can receive eternal life is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I like, noticed that, nah, it can't be. Only, you know, your righteous acts, you know, will get there. But as time went on, I realized that, you know what, all my works are just as filthy rags. As, um, as it is written in the book of Isaiah, filthy rags and nothing as compared to the righteousness of Christ, who was beaten for no reason, but he, he, he rose from the dead to give us an assurance that we might be saved. And when I was watching that um, channel, again, of that same preacher, I said, you know what? I think I have to read the book of John. I read the book of John, and I came to the, to the conclusion that, you know what? According to the book in John chapter 20, it says, all these things are written that he might believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that in believing ye might have life in his name. And it melted my heart and I was convicted and I turned out to God to joy and said, oh Lord, not only am I broken, but through this verse, I have found an assurance that if I put my faith in you, if I put my faith on the one who died for my sins, if I put my faith on the one who said, I am the word, the truth, and the life, and no one cometh unto the Father but, my, but by me, if I put my faith on the one who never sinned, but he died for the unjust, so that we who are sinners may be just before God, I might have eternal life. And from that day, I kneeled down before God. I said, oh Lord, my, right, my self-righteousness is over. Here am I, save me. And he did save me. I told my aunties that, you know what? I even said in that same verse of John chapter 20, that Christ is Lord and through him we have salvation. And I want to tell everyone in the chat that Christ is Lord. Christ died for our sins. This is Good Friday, amen? He died for our sins. He rose again. And he said, I am the bread. Whosoever eateth of me shall never be hungry. In other words, if you partake of Christ, if you receive Christ, you shall have eternal life. I want to leave at this before well, I leave. Well, thank you, my friend, yeah. for, for your sharing. Uh, may I ask you which country you're from? Like you have an African accent, if I'm not wrong? No, I'm originally I'm from South Africa, sir. South Africa, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. South Africa is, is it Africa? It's Africa, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. All right, my friend. Thank you very much. God bless you. And, uh, you know, happy to hear your voice. Take care. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, like today, usually we just talk about the garbage of Islam, so it's good to take a break from the garbage. Uh, uh, I will, uh, you text me, please, just tell me, and I will take your call one by one. We have a caller. He is an ex Muslim from Russia. Hello? Hello? CP? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Hello, CP? You hear me? Oh, thank you for calling me, Siti. Yes, yes. All right. Do you, kill, do, do you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. Yes, I'm a Christian from Russia. Yeah, you are an ex-Muslim, right? Yeah. Okay. So what do you like to share share with us, my friend? Siti, oh, I, I just want to say that uh, it's a very glorious time for all the Christians right now because uh, the Easter is coming. And uh, now it is a uh, great fasting for Orthodox Christians in the Eastern Church. So 
Uh, the first time I decided to dedicate this uh, fasting to writing a Bible. I just literally um, buy some, uh, uh, some, uh, no, uh, you know, some uh, paper and uh, try to write the Bible by the pen from my book, from my Bible. And now I just finished uh, Genesis. So I would like to write an all entire Bible and to look at uh, how it will be look like, you know, how many does, papers does it, uh, will be. Like, does it give you like a special, uh, special feeling when you do that? Like, you know, what, what made you think of writing the whole Bible again by your hand? What the purpose? What made you do uh, that? You know, uh, when, uh, yeah, when the war between Russian and uh, Ukrainian started, yeah. I felt very sorry for my Ukrainian brothers and sisters be because uh, before the war, I, I subscribed to some channels, some good Christian channels. All of them were incredibly uh, wonderful. And after war started, I just found out that all of them were Ukrainian, you know? Mm. Not Russian, <laughs> yeah. and uh, they they spoke in Russia, but uh, as I found out, they live in uh, Kiev or Lv Lvov or etc. You know, mm. all over in Ukraine. So I found out that Ukrainians are extremely wonderful people. You yeah. know, okay. they are more Christians actually than Russians because here in Russia, our pre preachers, our priests tell us that. We Russians have the only right way to live, and our Russian civilization is uh, will save the world. And so we need to be stronger to stand uh, for Mr. Putin, and you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the West is bad, and all of them are gays and lesbians, and so on. Uh, so, but you know, uh, Ukrainians have incredible balance between West and east they are true christians without any um pushings you know pushing yeah and uh they they have uh, incredibly uh, incredible power of christ in their hearts and they are really honorable pe uh, people so i r felt really sorry about them and i just wanted to cover me cover me by the word of god you know i mean to to escape from this uh, bad situation, you know, my heart was uh, uh, bleeding, you know, and uh, I just wanted to be closer to God. So I decided to write down my Bible to the paper. So and now I feel much more better and uh, I pray every day for uh, this war will be ended. I mean, they well, my, so, my friend, you know, uh, I think you and the uh, people in Russia and Ukraine, the Christians I'm talking, you have a duty uh, to fix the evil is done because war is evil and killing Christian cannot be justified anyway by anyone. It doesn't matter who do it. And uh, uh, you can still always build the bridges with those Ukrainian. And I know that this war will create hate, uh, a lot of hatred for sure. Uh, but uh, evil is evil, and true Christians always condemn evil. It doesn't matter who is doing it. We will not side with the evil one, no matter what. And uh, there's nothing can be justified by invading a country, claiming that you are going to re re like uh, liberate the country, and and then we find that you are just just shooting everybody in the way. Uh, that is not from Christ. And not only that, he bring an Islamic army to invade a Christian country. That is a pure evil. So we pray that the Russian, they will, they will see the truth and they will not listen to such an evil man like Putin. I used, to I used to think about him highly, actually. I used to think that he is a smart person. And now I'm very convinced that he is really stupid. And he made the most stupid mistake ever in his life, in his career, maybe. Uh, but the important now is to finish this war because at the end of the day, both the one are killed and the one who doesn't matter who killed who now, the both are Christians. And this war cannot be, cannot be, you know, justified in any way. So the one who invade my house should leave, and he should apologize for invading the neighbor, 
and the one who is hating the Christian because of Putin, he should not hate them. All those soldiers, they are just doing an order, you know, none of them, if one of them he tried to run, they will shoot him, you know, we know that. And we know that this is a dictator, he controlled the whole country. And we know that many Russian, they oppose what Putin he did. And anyone who oppose him, actually, if he know them, he put them in jail. So we know what kind of evil act he is doing. So my friend, we are grateful to have you. And maybe one day, if, I, uh, if you are just, going just, to go just, to just Ukraine... Just a moment, please. Yeah. Uh, just a moment, please, uh, CP. I just want to, talk, uh, to, to say that, you know, in, in Russia, uh, all of the... Uh, priests uh, of uh, Russian Orthodox Church, they praise Mr. Kadyrov. <laughs> uh, they praise him and his army. They say that uh, those Chechen uh, fighters, they are our brothers in arms, you know, mm. they are like us, you know. Mm. Uh, they are closer to us than those Christians in the West. So now we are the, uh, they are on one nation. So we should be together and to fight against evil in Ukraine, uh, etc. You know, but this is totally false. <laughs> it's only propaganda. Yeah. And I'm sick the of verses, it. So I wanna just yeah, the verses Khadarov he read in his book, it says that you as a Christian, you are evil and you should be killed. So those priests are a bunch of uh, you know coward and they are not a priest. That's why we, you know the Bible speak about them, about false teachers, be aware of them. They will come to you in the clothes of a sheep. But in fact, they are wolves. So we as a Christian, we should not, this is why we should follow the Bible, not a priest. The Bible says, who is the Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son and the Father. That's it. But his name, yeah. but his color, what his ethnic, is not important. Anyone who denied the Son is not, is nothing but Antichrist. And this, those are yeah. the, the one they are praising. So they need somebody to put them in their place and to say, show them how filthy liar they are. They are deceiving the Christians. They are speaking politics. They are not speaking God. This is what they are doing. They are doing politics. They have a man. They, they are coward too. I, I saw actually, I saw a priest. Just because he used the word war, he received, he posted in his, uh, in his website saying, we pray that this war will end. He did not say anything. He received a, a letter from the police that he is under investigation just because he used the word war. When he went there, they absolutely. Took him, yeah. Yes, yes. He went there. Yes. He it, said it was it, it was in city Kostroma. Yes, I know yeah, this yeah. situation. So yeah. he said he said what I did. What what happened? He said you use in your website the word war. You should use a special operation. He said to them. Yes, yes. Well, I did not see anywhere exactly. in the Bible it says special operation. The only word I see in the Bible is yeah. war. You know, what special operation? So yeah, even yeah, yeah. if they want to control the mouth of every priest, uh, Putin is practicing Islam in Russia. Dictatorship is Islam. Yeah. Anyone don't agree with you, kill him. He's a kafir. You know? So this is a gang system. Yeah. This is a gang system. This is not from God. And I hope and we pray that the Russian people like you, they will deliver the message to the Russian and they will make them love the Ukrainian and the Ukrainian love you too. And actually, I always speak Ukrainian. I say to them, we should not teach our children to, to hate the Russian because yeah. the, the one who is doing this, they will go. They will go. Hell will take them, you know? The grave will take them. Yeah. Putin will die. I will die. You will die. Everybody will die. But hate will stay if we don't fight it now. So we don't want to inherit hate. We don't want to give hate to our children. We are Christians. And Christian, they always forgive. And I believe the Ukrainian, I met, I mean, I'm, I've been in Ukraine in many places. Wonderful people. And maybe one day if I go there, I will let you know that I'm going there so you can meet me in Ukraine. And I'm sure they will welcome you, even though you are a Russian. Actually, I, uh, the, I, there's, a, there's a minister in, in Ukraine. He was so excited to take me to many churches. And he is, his wife, his family, they are Russian. You know, he live in Ukraine, yeah, he's yeah. Ukrainian, and his wife is Russian. Wonderful people, you know. And I saw, I, sa I said to the wife, I said to her, well, how it feel like you are a Russian now? Because I, even when I was there, I mean, there's a war. But it's not like a big scale war. So I said, how would it feel for you to be a Russian and you live in Ukraine? He said, nobody bother me. You know, and this is, this is defeat all the lies of Putin, yeah. lying Absolutely. saying Absolutely. that Russian, they are discriminated and Russian, etc. What Putin, yeah. he did, yeah. Putin, he Absolutely. did, he used a bunch of gangs and they said, well, we are Russian. We don't want to take a part of the land and we'll make it part of Russia. 
And here you ask yourself, any yeah. country in the world, any country in the world, if, like the Shishenia one day, they try to be independent, right? What the Russian did, government, yeah. they demolished the, the uh, Shishenia. So how come if somebody yeah. want to take away your land from you, or you claim it's your land, maybe it's not, you go to war with them. But when the Ukrainian, you want to take their land from them, from their borders, they shall not go and war with you. So hypocrisy is big. And we're here. We are here to, uh, to fight to fight hypocrisy. Thank you, my friend, for calling. Um, Thank you, CP. I, I actually, I actually, I, I uh, admire by you because you know on how how you get this information, this close information about some stories about Russian priests who was kicked out of church because he said the, the word war. You know, I you you are incredibly inf informed person. You know. I, I, well, I, be, I believe the Lord, he sent me, he sent me those videos, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Lord, he sent me, you know, my because, interest. Because, yeah, 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 because I was watching you for a while since uh, uh, February to March, and uh, I was wondering why, how CP living in the United States, he, is, uh, he, he gets this information. Where is he gets information from, you know, it's really wonderful, CP. Yeah, thank so, you. Uh, just just uh, do what you're doing and god bless you thank god you. bless you guys Very and uh, jesus christ uh, be with you thank you take care bye bye all right we take another caller uh, we are another another person from russia uh, we are watching live and we would like to call after us, oh, so he's not from Russia. He's saying he want to call after the Russian person. Okay, I don't know if he is a Muslim. The name sounds like a Muslim, but look like he is not a Muslim no more. I don't know. Let us see. We are trying to call you, Amir. Uh, look like he is maybe not available. Uh, let us call him one more time. Still not answering. Oh, when he answered, I hang up on him. <laughs> he answered finally, I hang up on him by mistake. Right, let's try again. <laughs> 